、生徒とかへどうぞ。ちょっとした。ちょっとびっくりして。はい。ルイ・ダゲア、The Camera。Photography today, a flood of pictorial information. It's become a form of expression as important as language itself. It's also a multi billion dollar industry with a massive impact on our lives. Photography molds our aesthetic perceptions, our dreams, our aspirations. Its secret lies in the microcosm of the atom. And it works, in the case of black and white photography, like this. A light sensitive emulsion of silver bromide suspended in gelatin is coated onto a plastic or paper base. The silver and bromine ions form a regular crystal lattice in which a few positively charged, free moving silver ions are always present. When the shutter of the camera is opened, light falls on the crystals. Where it strikes a bromine ion, an electron is released. And the bromine is absorbed by the gelatin. The photographic effect is due to crystal nuclei known as sensitivity specks to which the released electrons migrate. Now negatively charged, the specks attract positive silver ions. And the process is repeated until all the electrons released by light action have docked. The complete image is now atomically stored but still invisible. It's rendered visible with the help of a developing agent, which attacks the silver bromide crystals with sensitivity specks and converts them into metallic silver. The result is a negative image. Repeating the process using light sensitive paper reverses the light and dark areas of the negative and produces a positive. In color photography, similar chemical processes take place. Color film consists of three layers, each sensitized to respond to a different color spectrum. Together, the three layers produce a full spectral negative, which can then be reversed by repeating the process on color paper. A lot of pioneering work went into developing the technology that eventually produced this glossy cover photo. The voyage of discovery started several centuries ago with the camera obscura, in which an upside down image is projected through a hole in one wall. This forerunner of the photographic camera was used by artists as a drawing aid. In 1727, Johann Heinrich Schulze discovered that silver salts turned black when exposed to light. But it was the Frenchman, Nicephore Nipse, who conducted the first experiments aimed at harnessing the chemical process. His idea was to get light to provide motifs for lithographs, and his experiments bore fruit. But the technique he used required several hours' exposure time, so for photographic purposes, it was of very limited value. News of Niepce's work reached the ears of Louis Daguerre, another Frenchman with his sights set on reproducing reality. He was the owner of a successful diorama in Paris and had made a name for himself as a painter. For his photographic experiments, he developed a special camera. Daguerre and Niepce formed a partnership. Although bound by a common interest, they never became friends. Their characters were too different. Niepce was a tinkerer. Daguerre, a businessman. Niepce laid the foundations for photography, but it was Daguerre who succeeded in developing a practical photographic process. In 1835, two years after Niepce's death, Daguerre entered his studio to make preparations for a photograph. Extremely long exposure times were still a big problem. To make maximum use of the available light, 
Daguerre used a mirror to reflect the sun's rays. Even so, it still took around eight hours to obtain a visible image on the photographic plate. His simple camera showed the subject upside down. Daguerre removed the ground glass screen that served as a viewfinder and took the lightproof box containing the photographic plate out of the laboratory cabinet. When the cover was removed from the box, exposure began. Then it was a question of waiting for several hours. Suddenly, dark clouds appeared in the sky and blotted out the sun. Daguerre had no choice. Exposure had to be interrupted. He removed the plate from the camera and put it back in his chemicals cabinet. The next day, Daguerre returned to the studio to start again, intending to reuse the briefly exposed plate. Just to check it was still serviceable, he opened the box. To his amazement, he found himself looking at the previous day's motif. Some chemical substance in the cabinet must have developed the plate overnight. As Daguerre subsequently discovered, the developing agent was mercury vapour. It was the breakthrough Daguerre had been looking for. Development by mercury vapour reduced exposure times to minutes. A shoeshine boy and his customer were the first people to be photographically recorded, appearing as a detail in this boulevard scene. Daguerre set about marketing his idea, helped by the eminent French scientist Arago, who announced the daguerreotype process to a spellbound audience at the Academy of Sciences in Paris. Financial difficulties forced Daguerre to sell his invention to the French government for a lifelong annuity. The King of France donated it to the world. Daguerre continued to do his utmost to promote his photographic process, publishing a booklet about it and sending complimentary photographs to the ruling houses of Europe. The advertising effort paid off, providing Daguerre with a handsome income. He also received royalties for the cameras made under licence by his brother-in-law. Daguerreotypes were developed with the help of a burner producing mercury vapour. Photo studios emerged, offering the well-to-do portraits like this. The unique images were coloured later by hand. Encouraged by Daguerre's success, a British scientist, William Henry Fox Talbot, decided to make his own work public. Unskilled in drawing, he too had been looking for ways of making pictures automatically and had developed another photographic process several years earlier. He hadn't, however, published a description. When he did, it won him a place in history as the father of the negative-positive process. His photographic plates were not final products. They were negatives from which an unlimited number of prints could be made by exposure to the sun's rays. The wheels of development continued to turn. Feutlender produced the first scientifically designed lens, further shortening exposure times. In France, the first star photographer emerged, Nada. Among his clients were the actress Sarah Bernhard and the sculptor, Auguste Rodin. In the early days, photography was reserved for the social elite, but it soon became more widely accessible. This special camera, developed by Diderry in France, permitted portraits to be produced in series, which significantly reduced the cost. 
The next step in the evolution of photography came with the introduction of the wet plate process, which yielded pictures of brilliant quality. It had one serious drawback, though. The collodion plate had to be sensitised in a dark room immediately before exposure, and then exposed while the emulsion was still moist. This meant that a travelling photographer had to carry some 50 kilos of equipment, including a tent and a whole battery of chemicals. The exposed plate also had to be developed on the spot before the solvents in the emulsion evaporated. Nevertheless, the collodion process enormously boosted photography's popularity and many early tourists were undeterred by the weight and complexity of the equipment it required. The Kodak box camera, one of the first amateur cameras invented in 1888 by George Eastman. To change and process its roll of film, the entire camera had to be sent into one of Eastman's factories. Scenes of human drama recorded for posterity. The latter part of the 19th century saw the rise of photojournalism, providing exciting pictorial documents of contemporary events. The Leica, the first miniature 35mm camera. Its arrival marked another step along the road to popular photography. In the 1930s, cameras finally went into mass production. And by the end of the decade, the chemical industry had developed a viable colour printing process. From the first single lens reflex camera in the 40s, a direct path led manufacturers to today's ergonomically designed camera packed with electronics. Modern photo finishing lines have been developed to meet the soaring demand for processing. 18,000 prints an hour are produced on this machine. Two billion colour films a year are processed worldwide. The Polaroid camera, invented by Edwin Land back in the 1940s. A look inside the human body, without pain and without surgery. Many advances in science and technology would be impossible without the technique of photographic reproduction. For example, the progressive miniaturization of electronic circuits. And what the human eye is too slow to detect, a high-speed camera registers with ease. Fractions of a second recorded on film. One, two, three, shoot. Nicely cut. Cleanly the cut. exposure time here was just one fifty thousandth of a second. In, the air. in future, conventional photography and digital computer technology will become increasingly entwined. Already, normal photographs can be digitalized, stored on disk, and processed at will. Fully electronic cameras no longer record pictures on chemical film, but on diskettes, whose data can be transmitted by radio or telephone to anywhere in the world within seconds. Photography without frontiers. Photography liberated from the chemical processes laboriously manipulated all those years ago by Niepce, Daguerre and Talbot.